My full name is Kofi Asante. Uh, my birth name is Lawrence L. Yancey. I really didn't know my father. I only saw him uh, maybe 10 to 15 times in my life. And then uh, I didn't see him again till I was in my 20s and uh, I had my own family in my own apartment. And I'll never forget that he came to my house and I took his keys and I took his car. And I drove about a block and a half before I realized I was really doing something crazy and I needed to take the car back, and I did. And I only did that because I wanted to do something uh, that he would be mad about because I was mad at him. He was my father and he wasn't a father to me. And that's something that later on in life uh, that I learned uh, that I had to uh, forgive. And because he said something to me, I never forget though. Uh, he started giving me orders in my house. And I looked at him, I said, you ain't been around here. You, you, how you gonna come in my house and give me orders? And he looked at me with a stern look in his face and such, a eye, and such a look in his eye. I never forget, he said to me, he said, you don't know how bad I am. And I said, and I'm still your father. So you better act like you know. And it went to my core and I gave him respect. See, my, me and my sister uh, was raised primarily by my grandmother and my great-grandmother, two strong and powerful women, and my mother. But my mother was like, at a young age, you know, she was just living life, testing life, uh, stretching the boundaries. My grandmother, um, she was a thrifty woman, very wise with a dollar. And she went from having a one-room flat, 17th and Norris, to having uh, half the uh, apartment, to having the whole floor, and then eventually buying the whole building. And we had a three-story home. And she taught us that we could do anything that we put our minds to. And both my, my sister and myself wound up in some kind of way in the arts. Uh, my sister went to... Um, New York to become stage manager for Joseph Papp in public theater for many years. Worked on Dream Girls, um, uh, for Colored Girls, uh, uh, you know, was really into theater and, and all of those kind of things. I wound up with the great Arthur Hall. My education comes from a variety of different uh, <laughs> sources. I, I completed high school. I graduated from Ben Franklin High. When I graduated from Ben Franklin High, actually, we had turned the name to Malcolm X High. Uh, I was a part, I'm a, I'm a product of the 60s and of the, uh, of the uh, Black Revolution. And um, it was a great time, uh, it was a great time learning about oneself, uh, discovering oneself, discovering one's culture. In fact, it was, it was um, in high school, in my senior year, that I saw the Arthur Hall African American Dance Ensemble and the Shalele Sisters on the stage and a young audience program at Benjamin Franklin High School, Malcolm X High School. And uh, I was just blown out the water. There was these drumming and these girls was dancing, their heads were spinning all around and bodies moving in ways. I was just like, yes! You know, they had everything over James Brown. So, you know, it was like, it was fabulous. As soon as I got out of high school, I went to the ELAFA Center for Arts and Humanities, and uh, started to learn how to drum. And uh, my first teacher was William Powell. The things that we learned was more than just drumming. We learned about culture. We learned about where the drum came from. We learned about uh, what the skin is made of, why it's shaped the way it is, why, you know, the, the family that it belongs to, that it's a, it was a living, breathing entity that um, uh, had magic uh, and to it and, um, uh, and spirit to it. I, I owe uh, so much to uh, African culture uh, that shaped me, taking me from being Lawrence Yancey uh, to um, being having a, uh, the name Kofi Asante uh, and then moving to be Nana and Kofi Asante and Kosuhini. Coming from a, a kid out of North Philadelphia uh, from the hood 
uh, to being able to be installed as a king in West Africa. So I mean, and and all of those things would not have been possible if I had not set my foot in the doors of the ELAFA Center for Arts and Humanities and met a wonderful man named Arthur Hall. People consider me in some circles a a leader in the Philadelphia com African American community. Uh, I've been afforded some great opportunities. I ran one of the largest African American cultural events in the city of Philadelphia for over a decade, from 1985 to 1995, and that was all due to um, Arthur giving me an opportunity to uh, uh, first be a, a public relations person for the uh, Arthur Hall African American Dance Ensemble Company, not even to talk about the, you know, uh, the drumming and the dancing and the singing and, you know, going on tour and, you know, just uh, living this, uh, you know, it was interesting. Arthur would always tell me, people just don't know who you are yet. You know, mm -hmm. uh, just keep working, you know, and I was like, I don't know what he's talking about, you know, I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, because I'm drumming and dancing and I, I, this is the life right here, this is it, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. When I left uh, ELAFA and I started running the African Americans Festival and I started doing some things and uh, uh, was getting some notoriety and uh, around the city and you know people knew my name or whatever whatever that means uh, you know he said I was in a conversation with us he said to me say yeah you never thought you was gonna get your start from a, a, a homosexual gay guy did you <laughs> <laughs> and I said no <laughs> but um, uh, he was a great man and. Um, and a caring man. Um, he made me understand man's humanity to man. For that, I'm always, I will always be indebted to Arthur Hall. I ran this uh, African culture program, which turned out, wound up being one of the largest African American parades ever in Philadelphia. When I left doing that, wound up running one of the largest nonprofit organizations that helped. Uh, that was geared to help fathers and uh, ex-offenders uh, for 15 years, and uh, I was the president and CEO of the National Comprehensive Center for Fathers. My relationship and my experience with my own father, and then um, moving, and then wind up, you know, so many years later, uh, really working with men to help them to be better fathers. When I think about the correlation of that, uh, and um, that when my father said, you don't know how tough I am, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still your father, mm -hmm. and I had to give him that reverence and respect, I found that the men that we served had those same stories mm -hmm. and of their own fathers. And it was interesting, and I'm saying all this to say, because it's interesting, again, here's Arthur Hall. Some 20 some odd years ago, right? He had went on tour, and I was, um, had moved my way up into the, ELAFA organization, and I was um, uh, uh, pretty much managing the uh, operations. And Arthur went away, and we were having some issues with some of the men uh, because they had done some work for us. The city held up the money; we couldn't pay the guys. You know, and you know how you know it, it, mm -hmm. folks in our neighborhood. You don't pay them; they'd be like, "Is you crazy? Mm -hmm. You know, where my money? Where's my money?" And uh, Arthur said, "Well, you can handle it. You know, I, I'll be back. I'm going to. I'll be back. You know." So I had to stay there and handle that. It gave me a great education. And I went on tour with him uh, as his master drummer uh, um, up in Maine and uh, Arizona and California. And, and, uh, but he told me once, he said, this drumming and dancing stuff is cute. Um, okay. He said, but you should work with men and, and help men. And I looked at him like he had two heads. Because I'm like, no, I'm doing this. You know, I was on my way to Pittsburgh uh, I wanted to be a musicologist. Uh, I wanted to be able to write about the drum. I wanted to be able to write about my experiences. I was going to be this scholarly cat that knew all about, you know, drumming and music and African drums and music. And he said, no, nah, you need to work with men. And here, some years later, I'm running the National Comprehensive Center for Fathers. Again, uh, wouldn't have been even there in my mindset not for Arthur Hall. And those, that, and, and those that Arthur taught, took uh, under his wing, like Nana Krantaman Aibwafu and Ron Payton, they were, all became mentors of, of mine. Um, Nana was my, 
uh, and still is uh, my spiritual advisor. She took me to Africa and the same place the author took her and she took me to Africa to be installed as a king. I mean, it was, it was an incredible lineage in terms of um, uh, those people that came through those doors at Elyithe and where they wound up being and what contributions that they have made and are making uh, to communities and society. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing and, uh, and should not be forgotten. I, I'm so happy to be a part of, of this legacy and so proud of what has just transpired with Lincoln University and that they are now going to uh, house uh, the Arthur Hall archives and collection. It is, it is great. And to be able to have the uh, oldest um, African-American higher education institution in the world um, hold this is phenomenal. Because this is a story that should be told. <laughs> Arthur somewhere, um, he's still conducting rehearsal and we're all in a room at the bar um, doing plies and, and uh, whatever else he's directing us to do five, to be able six, to get done. Seven. Five, five, six, seven, <laughs> and <laughs> Che Che Kool Aid, baby. You know, uh, and uh, it, so I'm, I'm, um, uh, I'm extremely, extremely proud, and will ever be in debt to the great Arthur Hall.